Hey guys, welcome to this very short video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a couple of things inside of ZBrush. I'm gonna show you a technique that I think is gonna be really helpful for some of you that are designing your characters. Uh, but just a quick a couple of announcements. So uh, first thing first, we just finished the newest course, which is the Advanced Texture Character Creation course, where we take uh, Thyros, the Tiefling, and we do the whole texturing process Inside of uh, Substance Painter, of course, we do the retopology process and we present him at the very end inside of uh, Maya and inside of Unreal. We show both ways in how you're going to be able to present your character. Now, this course is going to be available in the next couple of days. We, I showcased a little bit of this in the live stream on Monday, but I wanted to make sure that everyone is aware. And the, as always, we are going to have a sale at the beginning of this course. So stay on the lookout for that one. There's going to be a code available uh, so that you can get this course as soon as it releases. So other than that, I just want to remind you guys that we also have our portfolio review available. It's going to be down here in the description. The next portfolio review is in February, but you can already submit. I've actually seen a lot of submissions already, so you can already submit to get your uh, work in there. And finally, we have our competition, our little like whimsical magical creature competition. Uh, it's supposed to be a cute magical uh, creature or, or similar to that. We've already done a video a couple of weeks ago. Make sure to check it out if you are uh, looking for the specifics of the project. But this is the little reader that I was uh, working with. So I'm going to show you a really quick process on how to prepare the fur on the chest. Because fur is one of those things that a lot of people uh, have uh, questions about. Hair tends to be quite tricky. And I'm going to show you one technique uh, right now. Uh, finally, before I start working on this, I just want to remind you that the Epic Bundle is still available. This is the last like week that's going to be available on our station. Again, super huge discount if you want to get all of the courses that we released until the beginning of this year. So there we go. Let's jump into this guy. I'm going to duplicate this guy real quick and uh, I'm going to hide one of this. I'm going to go control shift alt with select lasso and I'm going to hide the head. Pretty much I'm going to delete the head and same thing on this side. I'm going to delete this whole thing. I'm going to say delete hidden. You can find delete hidden function inside of a geometry and then modify topology delete hidden. When we dynamesh again or if we dynamesh again, we're going to get this, which is going to allow us to um, like just like fine tweak this thing right here. I always use my trim dynamic to, to get rid of those like jaggedy edges that you normally get when you do this uh, process. But the cool thing is if we go back to the character, we're now going to have this guy. So I'm going to use my inflate brush a little bit just to inflate this thing on top of the character. And as you can see, this already is going to start looking like a fur patch. Now, one of the most important things when designing any kind of character or creature is the silhouette. I've been uh, teaching this quite a bit to my students in the last couple of weeks. And silhouettes are going to let you see or let you um, appreciate a character in new light. So I'm going to give him a really, really, really puffy like thing right here. I'm going to use my clay buildup to start sketching some elements right here. Actually, let me grab my, my tablet. There we go. So I'm going to do something like this. Now, when I'm doing hair, the first thing I want to do or like I like to do is I like to kind of create like a like a blocking of how I would imagine the hair to look. And there's a very famous rule. Um, I learned this from a guy at Riot, where if you get closer to the center line, you should avoid symmetry with hair. But if you're a little bit away or or to the sides of the character, it really doesn't matter. So, for instance, those two like bundles of hair that I have right there can very can very easily be created like this. But as soon as I get to the center, like right around here, I'm going to break symmetry. And a lot of people are scared of breaking symmetry. It's not that bad. And I'm going to create a nice little bundle right here. And then there's going to be another like smaller one right here. And a small one on top here. And another small one like right here. So as you can see, that's going to break up the character. It's going to break up the way uh, we're looking at the, at the bundles of hair, at the locks of hair. And, uh, and we're going to get something that looks really, really interesting. Same thing on the front. Like if we go to the front, I'm going to give him an asymmetrical sort of like frontal fur right here. This one kind of want to go all the way down like this. There we go. And then over here, we're going to have another one. And then over here, we're going to have another one. And of course, we're going to have like some extra ones filling this spot right there. So now when we see it, it's going to be fairly symmetrical, but at the same time, it's a slightly asymmetrical. I'm going to use my BSH, which is the snake hook brush. I'm going to use this one to, to kind of give it a little bit more silhouette. 
So with this, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to push the hair out of the character and create these sort of like spiky little things uh, along the along the surface of the character. Here, I'm going to turn on symmetry again. So, so that one's going to be symmetrical. There we go. Same for this one. We can make this one symmetrical. And then asymmetrical. This one's going to go like a little bit to the side. We're still working with Dynamesh, so all of this is going to be re, uh, re-supported. There we go. Nice. Now, what we need to do, and this is a little bit uh, crazy, but we actually need to separate all of this like bundles into different uh, sections, okay? So I'm going to use a brush, which is called the Slice Curve Brush. And what this will do is if I draw a line and then I press or I double tap, I'm going to be able to divide new polygroups of the elements like that. I'm gonna press Control W first to, to make everything a single poly loop. And then I'm gonna do again, Control Shift. And that's gonna be one lock of hair. That's gonna be another lock of hair. Actually, that's like another lock of hair. That's like a couple of other locks of hair. So let me isolate this, there we go. So we can cut this like, like this, it's a lot easier. Hide that one, control alt, control shift alt, and we're just like hiding and cutting the, the uh, lockets of hair. Once we have this, what we can do is we can do a split, a groups split, and this will divide all of the different bundles into different elements. That one we don't need. We're gonna have all of this. So now we can go, to, for instance, to the front one, Dynamesh again, and clean up this bundle a little bit. So. So that way we're going to have a nice little transition from one bundle to the next without actually having to, um, to model all of them. Okay. So for instance, something like that, let's isolate this real quick. And you might get this like very weird lines right here. This is where trim dynamic again works very nicely because you can really push this in and that's going to allow you to to have a, a nicer, cleaner shape overall. Dynamesh, smooth all of that, Dynamesh, small that, Dynamesh, there we go. So now that we have this, again, without symmetry, now we can increase the resolution of our Dynamesh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start polishing all of these guys right here. So when you're working with hair, you gotta try to see the bigger shapes first. Don't try to do all of like the fibers and stuff because fibers will distract you. You need to, to focus on the bigger shapes first and then we're gonna go into the, into the details. So for instance, this one kind of looks like it's going in. I'm just gonna follow along, kind of like move it to the side like this and see how with the Damien Standard and Clay Buildup, I'm being able to create this layering effect it's going to give us a really good base. This is not going to be the finished like hair for our character. It's going to give us a really good base. Same thing like over here. We have this one right here. This lock of hair like flowing down. Like this. I'm going to like cut in a little bit there. And then this one's going to be a different lock of hair that's coming from inside or from, from underneath all of this, guys. And again, by just like kind of like sketching Hair is a lot, I, I feel like the, especially this like initial parts of the hair, it's, it's a lot like sketching. So just by sketching this and creating the main volumes of the, of the locks of hair, we're going to be able to create something that looks interesting. I'm going to thin this down as well. So we have this very, very like long lock of hair flowing down into the creature. There we go. Now, all of this right here, we need to decide, is this a secondary lock? Maybe. Maybe there's like a small little lock coming from underneath there. And we're gonna have, with the snake hook, a little, like, changing silhouette there as well. So see, that's now a new lock of hair. Dynamesh to clean that up. And we continue over here. So for instance, this one kind of, it's kind of telling me that it wanna go this way. So we're gonna go this section. And then this one right here with Damien and Stander, I'm gonna create like a deep division. And this lock up here is gonna be coming from inside, from underneath the elements. 
and creating this interesting overlap over here. There we go. Dynamesh, and that's it. Damien Standard again. I'm going to just like mark this guys a little bit more. And of course, it's very important that we go back and we take a look at how this is starting to look with the character. And as you can see, not bad. We're creating this very, very nice, like puffy uh, hair on the character. So eventually, this technique, I need to repeat this technique and do it over here. Same deal with Dynamesh. We're going to get this very weird looking mass of, uh, of hair. And if you do one of this like masses of hair, another option is to duplicate them and just like move them around, scale them, rotate them and position it in other sides. However, if you manually do all of them, you're probably going to get a better result. So um, by this point, guys, like if it's the, right now, we're getting to the end of January. And I would recommend that if you're uh, going to be participating on this uh, contest, that by the end of January, you should try to finish the high poly modeling. I would say that that's a good time frame to finish your little character. If you haven't started, you still have a couple of days to 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 uh, like uh, keep it or, or what's the word to um, uh, to move along and, <laughs> and and try to catch up, catch up. That's the word you can catch up. And uh, if you finish the high poly by the end of January, then that's going to leave you all of February to do the retopology and to do the uh, texturing, which, of course, takes quite a bit of time as well. So don't don't leave and everything until the very end, because then you, you might regret it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I also want to do a change on the horns, by the way. I, I definitely want to like change the horns. This one I can definitely like uh, duplicate to the other side. I feel like that's an easy that's an easy fix for that one. Um, but yeah, this is how I would start approaching the hair. So I'm, I'm actually going to have to stop the video right here, guys. I know we normally go a little bit longer, but I've been flooded with work. I've uh, finished the course. I've done the intro videos and, uh, there's stuff here at the studio at the house. So <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. I'm also already starting on the next course. Uh, that's going to be releasing in February. I've also made a, a small uh, sneak peek or I didn't show you what it's going to be. I'm not going to show it yet, but it's going to be a hard surface modeling course for Maya, like a little bit more advanced than the basic one that we did one uh, year ago with the objects. This is going to be a, a I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's going to be a really, really cool project. I already have the concept and I think you guys are going to like it. So that's it. If you're working on your project, good luck. Keep working. And um, yeah, I will see you back in the next couple of days, probably tomorrow. And uh, we'll continue with more 3D stuff. Thank you for your likes, your shares, your subscribes and your patience, because I know this by last couple of days and especially last week due to the internet issue, it was a little bit complicated, but yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we're back in track and we'll continue to do more 3D stuff. Hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.